Welcome once again to In Search of Christianity, brought to you by Bible Talk. On behalf of Mark and my sweet patootie Alice, I just want to greet you in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. We're just glad you can be with us for this, the next part of our, our relatively now new program, In Search of Christianity. And uh, we're going to start, but before we do, I'm going to ask Mark to just ask God's blessing on our time together. Lord, it says to lean not on your own understanding in the book of Proverbs. And we just want to renew our mind, change our mind, and reprogram our brains so we can get our heart right to serve you, Lord. And we thank you. We are thankful that we can study your word and proclaim it online and person to person. Amen. 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 All right, we, uh, this is our, our fourth program in this new series. And as we left off in our last week, we were talking about imitating Jesus Christ, being like Jesus. We looked at speaking like him, thinking like him, and acting like him, which all led up to this present study, loving like Jesus. But before we start that, have a good time? Oh, I was just saying loving like Jesus. Amen, yeah. Because that's the foundation of it all. It is absolutely yes. the foundation of everything. Um, I want to talk about a very serious matter, right? I received some feedback and comments this week um, about the broadcast that I want to share with you. Uh, first, I want to say that it's really a blessing to get that input. And I encourage anybody watching to do exactly that. You can write to us at office at BibleTalk.com with your comments, or you can go to Facebook at Facebook.com slash In Search of Christianity. So we, the more you participate, the better it's going to be, uh, more of a blessing it's going to be for all of us involved. Amen. Okay. This dear brother, uh, whom I've known for a long time, contacted me and we were talking and he said there were two things that he brought up about this program and the first one was if you've been with us you realize that I talked a lot when we first began about the difference between normal and common mm -hmm. right because I, th I thought that was very very important and I happen to be a word guy I, th I think words are very very important but what he was saying to me was that well people won't understand that because it's just you know normal, uh, anything that everybody is doing is considered normal today. And my point was during the studies, and you can go back and view these again, is the fact that normal is not what's common just because everybody is doing it. Normal is something that you know to be sound and true. Yes. No, normal is the way things ought to be done. Normal is an absolute guide to the truth. It, and I don't want to go through the whole thing again, but it came, normal comes from the Latin word for a carpenter square, right. which regardless of how you feel about it, is going to give you a 90 degree angle. Yes. It doesn't matter how old you are, how young you are, where you are, what language you speak, it's always going to be. And if, if a million people think that it ought to be 80 degrees instead of 90, you know what, it's still going to be 90 degrees. Mm -hmm. It doesn't change with the whims of the populace. Right. Okay, but I understood perfectly what he was saying. Mm -hmm. Because in common use, the word normal just means, well, everybody's doing it. Exactly. Right? I, right. I understand that. Mm -hmm. The other thing he shared with me was about how blessed he was by the new 30-minute format, the 30-minute timing of the program, and the format, the editing that I'm doing of the videos, and you know the graphics of the scriptures and everything and he really believed that that was a it would bless him and he said it was it really helps to maintain interest during the 30 minutes so since I got that feedback from him I have spent considerable time because I, I promise you if you send any feedback or comments suggestions I take everyone seriously 
So I took that very seriously, and I went and I've been having, and, I, and I'm going, conversation with the Lord about these two things. That's prayer, by the way. So for you to understand my response to his comments, you have to understand, first of all, this study is not intended for the unsaved. That's right. This is not evangelism. Yes. Okay? Yes. This study is intended for the saved. More specifically, it is intended, like the letter, or the book of Revelation, which it says in the first chapter, the first verse, it's intended for the bondservants of Jesus Christ. It's intended for believers who are truly serious about the Lord and His Word. Amen. And truly serious about how that should shape their lives. Okay? The Sermon on the Mount, which I've been saying, and I'll say again, will be a most significant factor in this study, was clearly delivered by Jesus Christ to His disciples. Now, there was a crowd around, and they were allowed to listen in. But it says, listen, this is from Matthew 5, verses 1 and 2. When Jesus saw the crowds, he went up on the mountain. After he sat down, his disciples came to him, and he opened his mouth and began to teach them. Okay? The Sermon on the Mount was a training, a training in righteousness, if you understand what Paul wrote to Timothy, training in righteousness for his disciples. And that's what this is for all of us, all right? When those same disciples later questioned Jesus about why he seemed unconcerned about the other people who had gathered nearby and they were not clearly understanding what he was teaching, mm -hmm. like with his, with his parables, Jesus replied to his disciples and said this, and I'm reading from Matthew 13, verses 13, 14, and 15. Therefore, I speak to them in parables. Because while seeing, they do not see. And while hearing, they do not hear. Nor do they understand. In their case, the prophecy of Isaiah is being fulfilled, which says, you will keep on hearing, but will not understand. You will keep on seeing, but will not perceive. For the heart of this people has become dull. With their ears they scarcely hear, and they have closed their eyes. Otherwise they would see with their eyes, hear with their ears, and understand with their heart, and return, and I would heal them. Hallelujah. As for those who are not walking according to the Spirit of God, well, while I invite anybody to listen and watch this program, to hear what's being said here, you have to bear in mind what the Apostle Paul said. He said, which things we also speak, not in words taught by human wisdom, but in those taught by the Spirit, combining spiritual thoughts with spiritual words. But a natural man does not accept the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness to him, and he cannot understand them because they are spiritually appraised. Amen. That's 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 13 and 14. We can have the hope and pray that the Spirit would touch the heart of somebody who's watching that's not a bond servant of Christ, who's not right with the Word of God, and that they might be led into that right, totally committed relationship with the Lord. But again, this program is for the bond servants of the Most High God. And I said in the very beginning, and I'm going to say this again now, this program will be like a university graduate level course. But regardless of how, whatever your level of education is, you'll be able to get it mm -hmm. because of the Holy Spirit. Amen. It is intended to be the solid food of the Word, the meat, for the mature Christian who is filled with and led by the Holy Spirit. That same Holy Spirit who has been sent to lead us into all truth. But it's going to require an effort on your part. Amen. Okay? This is not, you know, okay, the, the preacher goes and spends all week on his face before God, and you come in and you get the whole thing in 30 minutes, bada bing, bada boom. That's a fast food generation that has just impaired the church of God. Okay? He is a rewarder of those who diligently seek Him. You need to diligently seek God about these things. 
Now, let me just go back for a second, and I don't want to rehash the whole thing, but I want to talk about normal versus common again. Is it just a matter of semantics? And I pray that you're not anti-semantic. <laughs> okay. Okay. Mm. <laughs> I, I, I love somebody it. who did. <laughs> I, I love the Bible. I love yes. the Word of God. I have since the day I got saved. Since I just I, yeah, yeah, since I first opened it and met Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. uh, so I, that's my primary reading. But I like to read other stuff. And one of the most famous writers that the world has ever known, although he's not as well known here in the English-speaking world, was Miguel, uh, Cervantes. Oh, yes. Miguel Cervantes. Mm -hmm. And it, he was a contemporary of William Shakespeare. And of course, we know Shakespeare, but he was English-speaking. Cervantes, of course, is Spanish. But he wrote in two parts, uh, the Man of La Mancha, well, it's not called the Man of La Mancha, it was Don, Don, Quixote, Don Quixote de la Mancha. Right? right? The Adventures of Don Quixote de la Mancha. But in, in the uh, popular book and the film that was made about it a number, number of years ago, Don Quixote is quoted while he is imprisoned, right? Mm -hmm. By the Inquisition, I believe. And he said, when life itself seems lunatic, yeah. who knows where madness lies? Mm -hmm. To surrender dreams, this may be madness. To seek treasure where there is only trash. Mm -hmm. Too much sanity may be madness. But maddest of all, to see life as it is and not as it should be. Mm -hmm. well, we need to see things as God sees things, as they should be. All right? Right, right. The brother who contacted me, who I love dearly, by the way, said that people would not understand what I was saying because everybody knows that normal is just what everybody does, mm -hmm. what's common. Mm -hmm. I am being prayerful that what I say is not just about defending what I said. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay? That's not what I want to do here. My concern, my ongoing concern, is about the power of words and how the devil is robbing the church of that power. That's right. That's especially true with the life-giving, God-breathed scriptures, mm. which are now commonly being attacked by more and more new, paraphrased, easy-to-understand versions of the Bible. So because they don't think that the words matter. The words matter, okay? Listen to what I say now. Divorce in the church, forget about the world, divorce in the church has become very common. Greed and the love of money has become more than just common, but in practical terms, it's so common that it's encouraged and promoted by the church and disguised as God's desire for your prosperity. Right, to bless you. The acceptance of homosexuality is becoming more and more common in the church each day now. Mm -hmm. I'm sure you know that. Mm -hmm. Division in the church, and these are only some examples. Division in the church is so common today that like all of the rest of the things that I just mentioned, it is now accepted as normal. Yes. And as being good. Mm -hmm. Diversity, you know. Mm -hmm. And that list could go on and on. That new normal is the gospel of Satan, yes. the father of lies. That is the desire of the enemy who is a liar by nature. To make disobedience to God normal mm -hmm. and to separate believers from the word. There is a difference between what's common and what's normal. I don't expect the world to understand that, but I want you to understand that. Yes. We need to stand and speak the truth in love, regardless of the response. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I mean, look at the prophets of old. You know, they, they weren't patted on the back. And over. Jesus said, look at them. They killed the prophets. That's okay. Right. Now, I totally agree with my brother who said that in general, people wouldn't understand the difference between common and normal as I use them here. And I'm also sure that many people will not understand or like many other things that I say. But simply put, I'm not speaking to them. I know, too, that that statement may sound harsh, but I'm obligated to speak the truth in love and to seek the approval of God rather than men. Amen. Satan doesn't want us to be able to effectively communicate with God or with each other. 
That's right. That's a simple truth. Satan, think about this now. Mm -hmm. Satan was the engineer, the architect, and the mastermind at the construction of the Tower of Babel. Yes, he was. <laughs> yes, he was. Okay. All right? He's there watching this old young man as, there, as people are trying to reach on their own works and get into heaven. Mm -hmm. He was there to see that. And he saw that because God confused the language of the people who were working on it, he confused their inability to communicate with each other. That destroyed that project, project that he, the devil, had inspired. Mm -hmm. He learned a lesson. Yes, he did. The question is, we? did we? That's the question. Mm -hmm. The families of the church in the United States commonly send their children off each day to be educated. Poorly, I might add. By the, they're educated by the world in the ways of the world. Yes. They are taught what is normal. That in spite of that, in spite of the fact that the Lord spoke through the prophet Jeremiah to say, thus says the Lord, do not learn the way of the nations. Mm -hmm. Jeremiah 10 to. Those children are educated to be prepared for life with skills that are devoid of the word and of Jesus. Never being taught that communicating with the living God, that's prayer, yes. needs to be a constant and normal part of everything done in life. Jesus said in, in Luke 18, 1, he said that we're at all times to pray. Paul said in Colossians 4, 2, we're to be devoted to prayer. And Paul, again, wrote that we're to be praying without ceasing in 1 Thessalonians 5, 17. And I mean... You know, those are, I just picked a few verses. There are dozens and dozens of verses that talk about how we should be praying constantly. Mm -hmm. And yet, that can't happen in government schools where children spend most of their waking hours and are being, quote unquote, trained for life. Like the Church of Laodicea, Jesus stands outside the doors of those schools and outcast. Mm -hmm. That is not and it never will be normal. No. Absolutely not. Okay. I mean, I could talk about a lot of words because I, I think that it's important. I mean, how often in common usage do you hear the word repent? The very first message of John the Baptist. The very first message of Jesus Christ. I mean, the very first message of, of Peter when he was out on the day of Pentecost. Mm -hmm. That word is, is so powerful, so important, and yet, when... How, how often do you hear it? I promise you that it is, it is not common to be heard. It's been replaced with the word excuses. Well, and it's become replaced with self-esteem. You know, don't, don't trouble anybody. Don't. And this is in the church I'm talking about. Because remember, this is a search of Christianity. I'm not expecting Christianity in out the there world. in the world. No. I'm looking at inside the church. When was the last time you heard it? in a church service. Well, what's, what's really significant is the fact that some of the biggest churches in the world, which happen to be here in the United States, refuse to talk about sin. That's right. <coughs> because that's linked. Let alone call people to repent that's of their right. sins. That's mm -hmm. linked. Yeah. Because that goes back to the self-esteem. Because they're into self-esteem and right. preaching all the nice things, the smooth things that people feel, want to hear. Feel good. But listen, that is, that. by the way, that is normal in these perilous last days mm -hmm. because the word of God says that people will not endure and he's talking about quote unquote Christians will not endure sound doctrine what they want to do is they, they will accumulate for themselves teachers who will teach according to their own desires mm -hmm. well that's what's going on yes. but you know what that's to be expected because that's what the word of God says would happen right alright so just just think about that, all right? We have to speak the truth in love. We have to bring the Word of God because it is the imperishable seed of the Word of God that has power to change people's lives. It is the Word that God says through the prophet Isaiah that when he sends it forth, he will not return without accomplishing his purpose. Mm -hmm. There is power in the Word of God. Absolutely. So don't let the world talk you out of using that Word because people don't, quote-unquote, understand it or like it. Right? Okay. The next thing I'm going to talk about mm -hmm. was his second comment, talking about how much he liked the, the layout, the format, the editing uh, of, of the videos. Mm -hmm. 
By the way, I do too. I, I think, and I'm not saying this out of pride, but I mean just because I do all the editing. Mm -hmm. I do all the work. Uh, I think it looks nice the way it is. Mm -hmm. That said, I may need to repent of all of that work. Okay. Let's, let's talk about pretty pictures here, okay? It, it really felt nice to hear those comments from that brother when he said he liked the, the look and feel of the study. He let me know that the shorter time from 30 minutes, which was down from our, what we had been doing, 45 minutes to an hour in all our other studies, mm -hmm. he said that was much nicer. And the format, the camera moves, the graphics, the prominent display of the scriptures, kept the study interesting and kept it from being boring. Okay. Okie dokie. All right. I understand that. Listen. You're in a visual, living in a well, visual not, world. Not only that, yeah. but you have to understand in my background. I, my, grew up, my business life started in New York City in Manhattan. And this is back in the day, a long time ago. I was a, a communications consultant for the largest corporation in the world. And I did consulting for, on behalf of that company for some of the other largest companies in the world. And from there, I went into the advertising business. And when I got saved, I was the president of a small full-service advertising agency. Mm -hmm. I understand persuasiveness. I understand communications, mm -hmm. okay? I understand what it's like to be boring. I understand that, and you may not know this, but that we've been, the world, we've been trained in the world to have a very short attention span. Can, can I interject something right at that point? When Thomas Edison started video cameras, he said that movies will never get longer than 20 minutes long because the average person cannot have an attention span longer than 20 minutes. Now, I think recent people have, have proved that they can be trained to have shorter attention well, that's spans, why, that's why like two I, minutes. That's why Edison was wrong. But we have to be trained to have longer. Well, the, 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 when I say Edison was wrong, he was absolutely right about attention, attention spans. spans. What he didn't understand or what he didn't foresee was editing. That if you watch, if you turn on television and watch any show you want to watch, and you will see how the scene changes, changes constantly. constantly throughout. Mm -hmm. And that's done to, actually it was done originally, to try and train people, to condition people, to receive nice. information in very short blocks. Mm -hmm. And that was done to prepare them for advertising, mm -hmm. which was 30 seconds and 60 seconds. Right. So, I mean, this was a purposeful thing on, by, you know, that was done by the world to condition people to have a short attention span. That's the, that's the truth, mm -hmm. right? So, I, am, I, am, I truly understand that. And the reason I start, you know, I started doing this with this program because I thought it would require less time and effort on my part. Right. Boy, was I wrong. Okay. <laughs> Is it worse? Oh, I'm spending a lot more time. Yes. For me to edit the, the programs, as you see now, uh, to, to take a 30-minute program, because remember, I'm, I'm adding all the camera movements, I'm adding all of the graphics, and I have to go out and create all those graphics, I go, I'm adding all the scriptures. It, it typically takes me anywhere from a day and a half to two days just to edit that 30-minute video, mm -hmm. okay? Now, I'll get to the reason why I think that may cause me to repent. You see, I, that's what I'm saying, I know that I agreed with my brother because of the amount of time I spent doing the editing, right? Mm -hmm. Because I did it for a purpose, because I knew that it would, it would be easier to follow. And, but by the same token, now I have to think. I talk about this kind of stuff with the Lord. I did that, and I continue to do so regarding this comment. Consider these verses. The Lord said to Samuel, back in 1 Samuel 16, 7, he said, don't look, he's talking about... David, he says, don't look at his appearance or at the height of his stature, because I have rejected him. For God sees not as a man sees. For man looks at outward at the outward appearance, but the Lord looks at the heart, searches the heart. All right. God's not looking at the outside, right? He gets into the heart of the matter. If we're imitating God, shouldn't that be the way we look at things? 
not not be swayed by the outward appearance, but truly seek the heart of the matter. Mm. Then, then here's one, and I gotta tell you, I've shared this with pastors around the world because there's such a movement, particularly in the West, but this is going on in third world countries too. They're being influenced to make the buildings bigger and prettier, to make to make the, the outside more attractive, mm. to have programs that attract people. Yes, yes. Hmm. But one of the most famous passages in Scripture is Isaiah 53, which is the foretelling of the coming of Jesus Christ, the Messiah, and how he would be treated. And God spoke to Isaiah and said, Who has believed our message, and to whom has the arm of the Lord been revealed? For he grew up before him like a tender shoot, and like a root out of parched ground, he has, this is speaking of Jesus, mm -hmm. he has no stately form or majesty that we should look upon him, nor appearance that we should be attracted to him. That's Isaiah 53, verses 1 and 2. God's plan doesn't seem to be the same as the church's plan. We try and do everything in our power to make the church as attractive as possible to draw people. And yet, Jesus said, if I be lifted up, I will draw all men unto me. He was lifted up on that cross. Yes. And I promise you, there was no appearance that men should be attracted to him there. And again, I want to say, I'm not doing these studies to reach the lost. That, my friend, is your job. Right. That's your job. Each one of us, when we're out in the world, that's our job, is to bring the knowledge of the presence of God. I'm doing these studies because the Lord called me to. And because he has provoked my spirit by letting me clearly see how far... The church has come since it sat outdoors at his feet and heard him speak those beautiful, power-filled words, starting with, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. If I am led, and I may very well be, led to stop making the video presentation of these studies attractive, to lessen my direct workload, it may require more work on your part. You're going to have to take more notes. You're going to have to look up more scriptures. You're going to have to generally put more in effort right. into hearing from the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. And that's probably good. Amen. That's training. Well, because that's what it's about. We're supposed to be all be doing that, diligently seeking the Lord. Mm. So I think that uh, I may repent of doing what I've been doing and trust that if you just get the message, yes. plain and simple, that the Spirit of God will quicken your spirit and it will affect your life and your relationship with Him, which will affect everything. I ask that you pray. Now, if God would happen to send somebody else to do that editing work, somebody who has the skills and the equipment to do that, that'd be fine. But I actually came here from our travels around the world to take a quote-unquote sabbatical to sit and write, finishing some of the books I've been working on. That's right. And I find that rather than doing that, I'm doing so much of this video editing that's cutting into that time substantially. Mm -hmm. Well, if God had called me to do what I thought God called me to do, then perhaps I have allowed myself, and I take full responsibility, to kind of go off that path and start doing something that I shouldn't be doing. Not that it's a bad thing, other than the fact that I'm not supposed to be doing it. Right. And we need to work together. This study is a joint effort so listen that's it for today i don't even get into my message visit us on facebook at facebook.com slash in search of christianity give us your comments your suggestions your questions your prayers your prayer requests Thank your you. help <laughs> yeah i want you to know that we love you and we're blessed that if, you know that you're participating in this amen so until the next time when we'll actually get into the message I just want to thank you, Father, for your goodness and your graciousness. In Jesus' name, amen. On a hill far away Stood an old rugged cross The emblem of suffering and shame But I love that old and best for a world 
of Los Cines.